I think the first thing to recognize about Asia is that it's a region that encompasses more than half the world's population, depending on how you draw the boundaries. And, and included in that are the second and third largest pharmaceutical markets in the world in the form of Japan and China. So this has become a region that no pharmaceutical company can afford to ignore in a commercial sense. I think in parallel to that, we've seen over the last 10 years or so a, a really significant expansion in both the capacity and the capability around clinical research. We, and we've seen Asia gradually move from a, a sort of operational, executional role in global clinical programs to a much more innovative role and, and earlier in the development cycle. So we've seen uh, increasingly uh, innovative discovery platforms, translational research work and so on that's, that's growing in Asia. So I think Increasingly, we see the region really playing an end-to-end -end role in drug discovery and development and, and moving beyond the simple uh, starting point of local registration studies and, and uh, expansion of global programs. We see activity really right across all the therapeutic areas here now. Uh, we've seen some interesting diabetes compounds coming out of Japan, for example. Uh, in Korea, we see a lot of activity around biologics and biosimilars, and that tends to predispose towards immunology and rheumatology indications. So, um, so we, we really see just about every kind of activity happening. In our own company, we, uh, we've recently announced data around a dengue fever vaccine, a, a tropical disease, a vaccine as well, but, but a tropical disease focused very much on, uh, on the Southeast Asian market and, and also on Latin America. So, um, so I think we can say that, that there's activity in Asia right across the, the entire spectrum of human pathology these days. I think the most significant thing that, that governments could really do to, to help encourage further expansion of clinical development would be regulatory simplification and harmonization. When we do clinical research in the United States or in Western Europe, we typically deal with a single regulatory agency that's relatively mature and relatively advanced in terms of its ability to assess the work that we're doing. Uh, in Asia, I think we have a, a much greater diversity of regulatory environments and a, and a higher level of complexity on the whole. So I think if we could find ways to simplify the process and, and to encourage greater consistency between the, the countries, then that would be enormously helpful to, to industry. We've seen uh, a lot of steps in the right direction. There's been a lot of discussion within the ASEAN countries about regulatory harmonization. There's been the tripartite discussions between China, Korea and Japan. And, and I think we're all very enthusiastic to see these discussions move forward and see these result in uh, tangible simplification for clinical research activity.